So, um, you know, there are different tools. So, you know, at Agile IT, you know, kind of skipping a little bit towards the bottom a bit, but, you know, we, when we do these health checks, we use some, all parts of this, just depends on the, on the customer scenario. Um, you know, their makeup, sometimes they're in different sites and locations. We got to run different ways, different force, multi-force domain controllers. So sometimes you can run it once. Sometimes you have to run these same processes multiple times at different locations, even for one customer. So don't just think like, oh, well, if I run it on one place, it's great for all of it. Well, if you have, you know, if you have two forests, you know, multiple child domains, uh, I wouldn't trust one result for one area. I'd probably run it two or three times in different areas, but you know, you, you should really look at doing this, if nothing else, at least quarterly in your environment, as exhaustive as you can. If you're a simple environment, you could probably script it out. Um, we do that for some of our customers, where we'll automate it and script it just so we can get results and kind of capture any any major changes. But the, so a lot of the built-in tools, and we can talk about these three real quick, um, you know, are, are, you know, kind of fundamental parts of it, because it really does tell you a lot of of what's there. There's, for Ripa Admin, I think there's like a, a UI version of this. I kind of prefer because I like all the little, all the little dancing stars. But you know, if you just run this command line, it just, it just goes on any domain controllers. But look, what, what are these? Right? I think we have examples of this. We have screenshots of each. Uh, the Rep Admin one isn't that great because the machines we use to run this scenario is actually a single domain controller, so it wasn't replicating with another one. That's why we're not seeing that. But DC Diag basically runs a couple of tests. Uh, as you can see on this screen here, it says it'll tell you if it passed or if it failed. Now, what's important to note here is the fact that it won't change the color of the line. It won't, you know, scream out at you. It'll just say something like we have highlighted here where it says there are warning errors within the last 24 hours that this ball has been shared. Now, in this particular scenario, this is acceptable. Why? Well, first of all, we just stood up the machine maybe four hours prior to this screenshot being taken. Mm -hmm. So contextually, we're fine. It has built-in check to do this for a 24-hour scope. There will be issues if you just promote a domain controller without having that time capsule elapsed. Everything else you see here will say passed or failed. RID manager, objects replicated, net log on, so on and so forth. This is a great starting point for you to take a look and see, okay, what server did it execute against? Uh, as you can see there, the name of the server is win dash and a, a large number, right? If you have multiple domain controllers that would list each one, it would list which ones are having an issue, which ones are having issues in which areas. So that's at least a good starting point to start pinpointing or isolating the problem to a site, a set of servers, or a particular one. Rep admin, this is the one that Connor was talking about. If we were to have multiple domain controllers you're replicating, you would see where it says source, directory services. I'm not sure what the A stands for anymore. It's been a while since I looked at the Microsoft books. Uh, it would tell you the largest delta in minutes or in seconds if it's, you know, if it's a constant replication. It usually is a couple of minutes unless you're forcing replication, then it'll tell you right away. What you really want to focus on here is the error column and the fails total percentage. Uh, if you had a domain controller that was maybe patched or was going through an extended service pack at deployment and it was offline for an hour, then maybe one failure or two replications acceptable. Usually you want to see zeros here. If you see anything beyond that, it's cause for concern. Right. And finally, uh, we're using different tools here at Agile IT. One of the ones we use is actually a collection script. This tells us not necessarily the health of a domain by itself, but it provides us with the information so we can take an informed decision and classify the health as being you know, good or bad. It also lists if there's any additional issues, like it tells you where the sites are at the bottom section there, what domain that site is servicing and what the primary domain controller for that site is. Right, I, I will tell you that, you know, when as a, as a good common practice, uh, that's not really, done enough. Sometimes in IT, we, you know, there, there's such demands on us, right, uh, within an organization, not just like ourselves, but you know, as an IT organization or department. Um, we're, we're a valuable resource and everybody wants our time. Um, this is one of those things that you really should spend the time to do, to do it when you know it's healthy, right? Run this report when you know it's healthy. Capture it. So I don't know if everybody knows, like you can like do DC Diag, whatever the parameters do, you know, greater than, you know, report.txt, and then it'll, whatever came in the, in the, 
and the the results will get dumped into that file. So the nice thing when you run it run it like that, capture when it's good, right? So that way you can say, hey, everything's working, no errors. You should have that file that says that for a couple of reasons. One, when somebody goes, well, hey, when did this go bad? Well, I have this report from three weeks ago or two months ago when it was good, and this is what it said. Now it looks like this, and I can see the difference, right? I, I can see the difference. So if you can automate it monthly, that's great. Weekly, probably don't need to, but you can go through it. But even having this, because sometimes we go to customers like, hey, what do you have? They'll express it and tell us, but if you had a report, it's nice. We, we do run this at customers. And there are important pieces of information here that I purposely left as is, so we can just take a look at. In this case, you can see here, out of the gate, this is just something we, we didn't really configure in depth. Oh, can I take a guess? Oh, you're going to point it already. I'm not, I'm, I was going to say the wrong thing. I was going to say re recycle bin enabled is false. That's what I want to turn that one on. Why Why would that be off? That's a huge one that will, you know, save hopefully <laughs> a lot of people a lot of headaches uh, when they turn it on. Oh, I can see right here you got Windows Server 2008 R2 Forest, which is probably why it's off false by default. Default, right? There you go. That The other thing that you want to see here is the fact that we don't have a subnet and we have a site. Mm. So there's a couple of things here, you know, sites without site connections, one of them. So again, it won't tell you out the gate, this is a problem. You just need to know what to look for in these types of things. So Miguel, we're only one site with one, with one subnet. Why would I need to put that in? <laughs> well, <laughs> you're free not to but it'll make your life a whole lot easier and it'll have the computer be able to locate the site for future growth. Cause this is it at this environment is a snapshot in time as is right now. Yeah. If you had a new one, then you know, you're, you're setting it up, you're setting yourself up. Well, that that's really, I think the, the right answer is that um, start good patterns and practices from the very beginning and people will follow it as you go through. Uh, nobody likes it when, you know, you're the new IT person, you come in and go, why weren't these things set up? And we just keep adding to it. Like, well, if you, we start that pattern from the beginning. Now, if you don't have it today, um, you know, I would still take the time to add it in and then and then get the results from it later on. This is what we were looking at before for DNS management. Um, usually when we have stale records, they show up here as Kerberos or LDAP records. As you can see there, first thing a computer will look at is in this particular folder for TCP connection for the domain. It'll tell you, okay, these are all the domain controllers that can serve for Kerberos authentication and LDAP. If you have stray objects here, they'll still be considered as live. The computer doesn't know which one's live. Right, so then the scenario I gave, the workstation comes up and goes, hey, DNS, it knows its domain, and then it asks for these you know, underlying TCP you know, uh, service, uh, service uh, location objects, and then it, it just accepts it. It has no idea if it's there or not until it asks it. And that's why it starts to hang. So, uh, I, when we, uh, this is actually one of the cheap and easy places that I'll look first is I'll go in here and go, hey, look at the timestamp. This thing hasn't been refreshed in like, you know, two years. I go, oh, that server's been dead. And like, well, this probably is a leader into a lot of other problems. So, so in summary, I mean, there's a lot of things in the AD subject. And we'll probably do more of these kind of sessions. And, and in future sessions, we'll try and show some of the other tools live. It's, it's hard with this because we, some of the information we want to show might show too much, right? Some uh, some other IPs, but we're gonna build out a lab to, to show a little bit more of that on future Tech Talk. But uh, so one thing is check on it at least quarterly, at the very least quarterly, but monthly is a really good start. Automate as much as you can. You know, DC, you know, the the running those things are command line tools. You can easily create a Windows scheduled task, have it run, just dump it into a file and and be done with it. Um, you know, and, and make sure that when you, uh, uh, you know, that the health check that you, use really matches your environment. If you're a complex environment, a simple health check isn't going to give you enough. Uh, and one that we really didn't talk about, but I really want to make sure we know about it all the time is don't forget to back up your domain controllers and test out restores, not just restores of a domain controller, because sometimes they die and you want to, want to bring it back. Uh, but also like if you didn't have recycle bin turned on and you, had, you did have to revert back to a to a, or if it wasn't recycled bin, it got flushed out, and you did have to revert to a, to a backup, you probably don't want to apply all the backups because now you might lose people, lose workstations. So you have to do what's called authoritative restore. It's probably a fun topic for another day, which is, let me tell you, still not the easiest thing to do. It's, it's really challenging. Um, so when doing your backups, really what you need a backup is uh, system state is, is the number one thing uh, you have to look at. Mm -hmm.